Hey there, do you know what part and process of music production I dislike the most? Take a wild guess considering that like 90% of my released music is instrumental. That's right, I kind of hate singing. The main reason I kind of hate singing is because I want a voice that sounds like this or like this. But despite my rather deep, raspy sounding talking voice, my range and singing voice that I was born with is a lot more like this or this. And that just doesn't fit with my music too well at all. So when I do sing, it's soft and vague and usually shrouded behind effects. Another reason why I typically make instrumental music, more personally, as a musician my entire life, I really do feel like language and words reduce expression or communication in such a broad and specific way compared to harmony or melody. And unless you have some seriously good metaphorical poetry skills, lyrics kind of rob the listener of using their own imagination when feeling a song. By the way, I do realize that my personal opinion on this matter is in the strong minority and 20 plus years of lackluster record sales compared to musicians who sing never ceases to remind me of that. But anyway, that's a topic for maybe another video at another time because today I am gonna be singing. I'm gonna be singing really hard and singing a whole lot. I'm gonna be taking a melody and some lyrics that I wrote like 15 years ago and turning them into an auto-tune choir, and then I'm gonna turn each track into a vocoder and then make a crazy sloppy sounding polyphonic synth without ever having to touch a keyboard. And I'm gonna do it all with the Auto-Tune Unlimited bundle from Antares, not the star, the software company. The funny thing is that when I initially wrote these lyrics and this melody in 2007, it was intended for me to be singing it as a choir or even an auto-tune choir. But anytime I tried recording it, I just never really liked the way it sounded. And it actually ended up as a song called Goodbye Bastion on a record I released a couple of years ago, Piety of Ashes, and you can hear it as a brass ensemble there. So I'm going to be re-recording this song the way it was initially intended to be, a big-ass auto-tune choir. And if you're wondering if the timing of this video is a result of my Twitter drama regarding Rick Beato's video, it kind of is, because a lot of people literally think that autotune can make anyone bleat into a microphone and just become a pop icon. And that is simply not true. You're going to see me produce something that was the result of literally hundreds of takes and about 20 hours of transposing and editing. And I promise you, it won't sound anywhere near as good as Imogen Heap's Hide and Seek, because she is an incredibly talented vocalist and vocal writer. And I am, a jackass. It also won't sound as good as T-Pain or Post Malone or a lot of auto-tune using artists because they're actually good singers with great vocal rhythm, and I'm not. This also gives me the opportunity to check out a pretty rad looking fully featured vocoder that is now included in the Auto-Tune Unlimited bundle. So let's briefly play around with some of that stuff. Um, So let's just jump in and start with something that's super fun. This is Auto-Tune EFX Plus. It's kind of like a multi-effects, also pitch correction module that does a whole lot of different things. Has like a tube amp, a duet, a filter, all in the one preset that I'm using here that you'll hear in a moment. I'm going to enable a little bit of reverb, and then I'm going to freestyle over a loop that is in C minor and obviously I'm going to be bound into C minor. So let's get that rolling. So this is the C minor scale. I'm gonna enable a couple different notes, um, like F sharp. F sharp would be good. Maybe I'll do that on and off. And then also B. That could be nice. I'm surprised that my range is actually getting anywhere near this. All right, let's just do this here. All right, that B works. And then we'll maybe enable that F sharp. I'm making these videos all the time now. It's already past midnight. I sometimes drink too much whiskey, but that's when saying it feels right. In all seriousness, that was quite easier than I imagined. I don't really know how it sounded on your end, and hopefully it's not too embarrassing, but 
What it was was a lot of fun, so that's worth something. Let's play with some more of these presets. This one is slapback, vintage phone call. Is there a such thing as a plugin or a synthesizer that doesn't have Richard Devine presets on it? Another thing to note is that we have this XY pad here in case we want to actually edit our performances in real time. Uh, wow, so this is my throat length. And uh, this is my PX ring modulator. So disabling mutate and then bringing my throat length back to its original organic value and my pitch to its normal value. Of course, we still are being auto tuned. Woo! I'm going to go over to auto motion here and I am going to play a pattern which will basically trigger an arpeggiator or pattern that will control the pitch of the auto tuning on my voice. So I'm just gonna keep one tone straightforward and I'll show you how this works. And I could choose different patterns. Pentatonic major, maybe turn up some reverb here a little bit. Just a little, just a little bit of reverb. Maybe turn this on toggle so I don't have to hold the button down. Let's find a C. Listen to a tonic major. Gonna put on a blazer and shoot you in the eye with the laser. You're gonna have to have a fundraiser. For a medical appraiser. All right, so let's look at some other stuff. Auto-Tune Pro is probably the most commonly used thing in the Auto-Tune suite, and it's probably the most featured pitch correction software in the world, I would assume. I have loaded up AutoKey here, and what AutoKey can do is sense which key you're singing in, and then send it to auto-tune, which might save you a little bit of time if you don't actually know what key you're singing in. I'm going to try and sing something in C major. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. C major. Not bad, it got it. Okay, so now auto-tune should be locked in C major. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you're not familiar with how auto-tune works, if you don't want it to sound like auto-tune as much, you could turn your retune speed down, which gives it a little bit of time before it automatically shifts you into whatever scale that you want to be shifted into. Also, Humanize helps with that. Flex Tune helps with that. And Natural Vibrato also helps with that. And these are all still in the sort of simple controls. There is an advanced menu, which we'll get to in a moment. I'm in C major. I'm going to try and sing it a little bit more off pitch. I am in C major. <laughs> oh, that sounds nauseating. Okay, so if we wanted to get more everyday useful and professional with this, uh, one thing that we could do is click graph, which basically allows us to automate pitch and automation of certain events. And it kind of behaves like Melodyne would behave. I would like to play with that a little bit more, maybe in a stream someday, but it is actually really deep and powerful. And for the purpose of this video being less than six hours long, we're just going to go back into auto here. But we are going to click on the advanced menu because you also have the option of using MIDI in to essentially write your own piano roll to guide the pitch however you like. And so in FL Studio here, I'm just going to choose a MIDI out. I'm going to go to port. I don't know, 35. I'm going to go input port 35 on auto tune. So I could learn a scale. Ooh. 
All right, so by selecting target notes, what I play on the keyboard will be what Autotune Pro automatically maps my voice to. Uh. Pretty cool. Okay, so I have this set up to whatever I play on the electric piano here will also be automatically locked in on Auto-Tune's target notes. And I've turned the flex tune and humanize all the way down, so that part is, I guess, more obvious for you to hear. And here we go. Let's try doing this with Just a C seven at a higher register, man. Doing this in an actual session with a piano roll would be. So I believe the point of Autotune Artist is to operate at a extremely low latency. And let's see. That is a incredibly low latency. It's almost unnoticeably low. And it is working, right? <laughs> yeah, geez. It looks like Autotune Artist has everything that Pro has, including the target notes and learn scale and all that stuff. It just doesn't have that graph editor, to my knowledge. But it seems like everything else is still there. So... That's actually really handy. Aspire here is a noise reduction or noise creating uh, plugin. And it's pretty handy, I would say. I typically just try to EQ noise or use mics that aren't that noisy. So I don't really have that much content that I could really put to good use with this. Now, the choir plugin, I really do like. We could increase things to four voices, eight voices, 16 voices, or 32 voices. And we could humanize and kind of randomize the pitch and timing. And if you slam some of that through some reverb, you get... And so much like choir, we also have duo, which only gives you an extra one of you, but this basically tries to emulate vocal doubling without you actually having to record the entire take again. And so I can uh, adjust the pitch variation, the timing variation, the vocal timbre and the vibrato, and bring the level up on my double, and maybe pan these a little bit closer. And now I have a double! Mutator is just kind of a fun special effects type thing where you could move your pitch and your throat length and your throat width. <laughs> the throat width thing kind of sounds like the stereotypical California skateboarding guy. Awesome. I just face planted trying to pop shove it over your mom's peony bush, dude. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, we have a uh, mutate, which... Uh, Kind of just does this, and then we have an alien on. Yeah, it seems like alienize just reverses your dialogue. Serbian neighbors, Serbian neighbors. So, punch, from my understanding, is kind of an extreme compressor. So, for example, if I were to say something really quiet, if you look at the output here, it should be pretty much similar to if I said something really loud. Now, Cybill is a really good de and I'm using a Lawton Audio LS208, which is very good at de just as a hardware microphone, so it's probably not the best example, but I could try and speak in as many S's as possible and then turn on Cybill, and you get to see how that kind of takes the S's out of my voice. Not bad. So throat is pretty interesting, as it says right here. It is a physical modeling voice designer, and I can turn my source throat precision all the way up, 
and my voice is pretty loud and I'm going to add a little bit of breathiness. Uh, I can change the pitch a little bit. Where this gets really interesting is that I could change the width of my throat and also the length of my throat. So I could sound a little bit more of a masculine timbre and then if I pitched my voice down a little bit it would sound, you know, pretty deep and manly. So why don't you meet me down by the construction site? Or alternatively, I could pitch it up a little bit, turn my length a little bit lower, and now I sound more feminine probably. Or uh, So if you want to meet me by the construction site, I also work on the construction site. You probably expected me to invite you to a ballet or something, but that's only in your sexist mind. And then the pulse width just sort of acts as a way to dial it in. Let's move on. Uh... So warm is a plugin that acts as kind of an overdrive plugin or a even a distortion plugin if you enable crunch here. Nothing too crazy. So mic mod's pretty interesting. Unfortunately, sitting here right now, I can't really do a demo, and I also don't really know these mic models enough to tell you how close it sounds. But the idea of it is that if I wanted to speak to you into my Rode NT1 and have it sound like a uh, SM57, uh, I could do that. You also set the proximity. So this is like, what? 3.5 inches from my face, and I want the proximity of a faraway SM57 on a stage, maybe add a little bit of saturation. I suppose that me hearing my voice right now, it does sound a bit more like an SM57 or a dynamic microphone rather than a very airy condenser microphone like the Rode NT1. And I do own both of those microphones. All right, so Harmony Engine, I actually used a little bit when it first came out, and it is a pretty amazing plugin for automatically harmonizing your vocals. So by default here, you have a scale interval, and so we could have a C major, and this is how it sounds. We also have a choir down here that we could bring up to 16 voices. You could also just pick like a C minor seventh, and have it go to town with different inversions of that chord. But what is actually a lot more powerful is just using chord via MIDI, like we did a little bit earlier with a different one. And I can also enable the choir at the end of this. Uh, maybe not that extreme. And let's try that. I mean, let's just max this out and I'll put Autotune Artist in front of all this so I don't sing too far out of key, and we can also have that set up with targeted notes with the same port as the Harmony Engine, and let's just see if this all works together. To summarize, we're using Autotune Artist, we're using Harmony Engine, we're using Choir, and then I'm gonna throw a little bit of reverb on the end of that. All right, so let's just start with the... I'm now realizing that I had this set to soprano the entire time. So given that, it actually performed really amazingly. Let's just go with like a C major here and then only control the MIDI of the Harmony engine. This is probably going to work a lot more better. That's why I set it up the right way this time. We will use this Harmony engine again later in this video. Let's check out Vocodist. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be using someone else's voice. Anywhere but home. <laughs> Shadows in the night. Just going to do a bit of MIDI recording here. Honey. 
which I chose a different sample ever. I mean, actually, it's not the singer's fault. It's the editor's fault. Whoever edited these samples did kind of a not great job um, with the timing <laughs> and stuff. All right, why are we here? All right, so let's have a look at the newest offering from Antares, the Autotune Vocodist. And we have our normal input type, soprano, alto, tenor, um, scale, stuff like that up here. This is the filter section, which has different models of classic vocoders, I believe. Some of these I don't really recognize, but, you know, I don't really memorize vocoders all day. Um, there is a limit to 24 bands, which I could see some people being like, only 24 bands, FL Studio's Vocodex has like 128. Well, when you get up to 128 bands, not only are you using an insane amount of processor power, it's almost operating more as a spectral processor rather than simply a vocoder. You shouldn't really need more than 24 bands for vocoding if you want a vocoder sound. Now, that being said, I have used FL Studio's Vocodex a whole lot, but it is worth mentioning that if you want to use it as a vocoder for your lead vocals in a song or a vocoding sample or something like that, it is a giant abyss where your time will go into because of its flexibility and power. And it also has a pretty high learning curve. Another big difference is that what we're looking at here is everything in one page. You have your oscillators here, you have a compressor here, um, it auto-tunes your input voice, and then it even follows the voice that you're singing in. So you don't actually have to map a MIDI device into it or have a carrier and modulator input like you classically would with most vocoders. So here, let's just listen to show you what I'm talking about. I can disable one of these oscillators and I could change the shape into like more of a pulse width and this is the interval down here is your like fft envelope if your attack and release is all the way down you're gonna probably be able to hear the words the easiest now if your attack and release are really high it'll probably sound more just like a synth a smear kind of smears it it kind of makes it sound looser band shift will just make it sound like a higher or lower formant also when using a vocoder if you want your words to be understandable uh, having a noise signal is pretty important over here we have like an amplitude voice envelope we have stereo spread warmth just basic output effects and then we could also bring in the voice mix and add some chorus high pass filter mod i think is like a yeah ring modulator i might add a little bit more compression here and then just lower the overall signal All right, so I've opened up a little MIDI out module here and assigned it to port 35 out for just the reason of a random number. Port 35 in on here. I think any sort of VST will work with this type of setup depending on your DAW. But now with this little keyboard here enabled, I should be able to just play the keyboard and it will control the oscillator here. So let's hear that. There you go. All right, I've pumped this up quite a bit. Let's hear it from the top. <laughs> An interesting use case might be if you turned the Vocodis plugin down maybe to 40% and then put some reverb on top of everything and had this nice sort of odd harmonization happening with the original voice signal. Let's hear that.
there's an XY pad if you want to map that to a MIDI controller. I don't really mess with those all that often, but I also don't really have a MIDI controller that, well, I do, but I just don't use it. I should point out that everything that we've done so far is not actually using an external uh, carrier signal. It's using the oscillator in here. The actual way that we would use a vocoder in most setups is we would have a separate synth behave as the carrier. And so to do this, I'm going to create a voice and a carrier. And the voice, obviously I will route all of my vocal channels to voice and then carrier, I'll just have the electric piano in that one. And I will route both of these to the output channel of this plugin. This probably seems like complicated if you're not used to this type of thing, but this is pretty much how all plugins with inputs and outputs work. All right, so then over here in processing, the closest one and the farthest one, so one and two, and we'll probably have to adjust some levels here, but let's hear it. I'm gonna make these chords a little bit higher. Uh, so if I open up like the most basic synth that you can have in FL Studio, the three time OSC, uh, I'm gonna just copy and paste the MIDI data from Piano Tech over to this. All right, so I'm gonna level everything else down and I'm gonna blast it with one nice saw wave with any sort of envelopes turned off. And so let's try that. When we start changing up the carrier signals, it is inevitable that things are gonna start sounding muddy or off. And that's why we have so much control right here. Like we could find those audio pain points and we could maximize the points that sound pleasant to us. By the way, in my opinion, vocoders work amazingly with ping pong delay, just a little bit of it. All right, I jotted in an absolute minimum bass line. All right, and finally, let's slam this entire thing through a compressor and mute my stupid voice and have a listen. This one's actually using like vocoding from a reactor patch that I made. It is dark of you. It is dark of you. So I took the liberty of scratching down the lead melody, and while I've already harmonized it in that goodbye bastion song, uh, I guess we could see if there's some other ways that we might want to harmonize it for this. Maybe at the end of that? I don't know. I guess if I were to play it like a pseudo Mozart piece. I always have to make this claw so I avoid playing any <laughs> ninths or elevenths or anything. All right, let's butter that shit up. All right, let's make this sound a little bit more from the heart. Suck. Uh -huh. 
I would fly. Man, I can't get the timing right on that. I would fly from. No! It is. Ah! I don't have enough air. The arm thing out works. It is dark out here. It is dark out here in my lone bastion. If I could fly, I would fly from here. This is actually a feature that most people don't realize. When I was recording, I kept going back on the timeline while it was recording without stopping and re-recording, and FL recorded and put a marker for all of those song jumps so I don't actually have to realign anything, which is really handy. <laughs> Not that close, buddy. <laughs> do, re, mi, fa, do. It, it's not gonna happen. That low F is not gonna happen. Maybe with auto-tune it will. Do. If there's anything that is my musical kryptonite, it is this. R20 coming in. R20 coming in. Fuck. R20 coming in. R20 coming in. <laughs> Come on, man. So close. So close. R20 coming in. R20 coming in. Oh. Ben, why would you do this to yourself, you dumb idiot? I totally forgot about that offbeat. That one A, starting at, starting at bar 18. Go. I hit C6, starting from 18 again. You and your rhythm, Ben. Huh. Really, Ben? The hard one. I bet I could get through up to five bars. Okay. <clears throat> Man. I literally feel like I'm gonna pass out. That was rough. Right now we get into the hardcore harmonizations. Ugh. The tuba is going to be the hard one because I had to reach areas that are way lower than I'm comfortable with. But I guess we'll see. And I'm going to open up Autotune Pro because I think that might allow me to do some interesting things with those target notes. Ooh. God, that sounds so weird. My voice at that timbre. Is that actually correcting there? Or is that just my actual terrible low G? Ooh. No, we're good. If I could fly, Ooh. I would Ooh. fly Ooh. from Ooh. here. Kind of crazy to like see my little harmonic vision actually if i was doubting myself the entire time i was singing it i was like this i, I don't know what i'm doing and then now it's actually kind of making sense in my lone best Yes. So this kind of goes to prove that if you don't know anything about melody, you're going to have a really hard time with something like this, unless you just leave it on the auto mode, but then you're not going to be able to get like the specifics of what's happening here. And I don't mean that in like a gatekeeping way, but it, 
I do mean that in the maybe auto-tune isn't such a cheat as some other YouTubers like to go on about. This needs so much work with the timing. Everything's off by like bars and places. I think we are in pretty good shape here. And that's saying a lot, considering how much I hate recording vocals and my voice in general. One thing that I want to tackle, though, is in my lead vocal, my vibrato is wide enough to where it is triggering other notes in the autotune spectrum. So if I go full-on autotune, well, let me start from the beginning here. First of all, if we disable autotune. It is dark out here. It is dark out here in my lone bastion. The vibrato in the word dark is getting out of hand far enough to where it's triggering other notes, especially if I bring the retune speed all the way to zero, like straight up pop music style, flex tune all the way down to zero, um, natural vibrato to zero, humanized to zero. Let's hear that. It is dark out here. It is dark out here. Yeah, so it's it's kind of sounding a little, I don't know, goofy. So I'm going to enable the ignores vibrato targeting thing in the automation right here. Dark out here. It is dark out here. In my loan. Okay, then it gets a little goofy in in my loan. So we'll disable it there out here in my lone there we go best so what this does is if i have some sort of inflection with my voice if i were like ah, ah, like that it would kind of allow that to exist on its own rather than trying to correct that exact part of the the singing so like let's hear this part over here i think i i think i do a little bit of these inflections over here Bye from here okay so uh i'm gonna enable it over here and let's hear how that changes from here yeah see that here which i don't want i'm happy from with this from here if i could fly i would fly from here that actually sounds really good and i feel like my pitch was pretty decent in that recording after the hundredth take so it's kind of hard to tell how much it's affecting but it is funny because there is that one part where my body voice turns into my falsetto voice i was like that ah, and like that actually sounds auto-tuned because it's just sort of skipping pitch really fast ah, yeah. <laughs> i think i'm okay with this actually i don't think i would ever release it but i think w with you knowing the humility that i feel doing this in the first place i feel a little bit better about it like if it was just up on spotify or something i'd be like oh hell no i kind of want this to just sound like a clock if that makes any sense but let's hear the whole thing now it is dark out here it is dark out here in my If I could fly, I would fly from here. It is dark out here. It is dark out here in my lone bastion. If I could fly.
that kind of turned out not as terrible as I thought it would, just considering how scared I was to use my voice in any degree this seriously, or this upfront. Cool. Guess I'm going to hit render. I do. To be honest, I'm kind of amazed by how efficiently it all ran, simply because I had so many instances running at once of multiple variants of the auto-tune BST plugin, as well as the harmonizer and vocoder and duet. And in this process, nothing crashed either. So back in the day, I bought and would use Melodyne Pro for this type of stuff, but it felt like over the years, nothing was getting really meaningfully updated and the UI is just a bit clunky and unpleasant for me. So then more recently, I'd use whatever native DAW pitch correction stuff I had and then Pitch Map from Zynaptic, which is really good, but also really resource intensive and crashy. In fact, at least with FL Studio and Reaper, Pitch Map would add a huge amount of latency see to my overall sessions, so I'd have to bounce things constantly for any pitch correction stuff to work. Now that I've actually used the MIDI integration in Autotune Pro, it kind of does the job of pitch map and Melodyne, but it does it with a lot of stability and efficiency. So I'm probably going to be using that exclusively for the foreseeable future for all my pitch correction needs. All of these different plugins are available in the Autotune Unlimited subscription, which is $18.74 per month if you pay yearly or $25 per month if you pay monthly. Vocodist is exclusively part of that subscription, whereas you could buy various versions of Autotune and other plugins as a permanent license if you wish. A lot of people complain about subscription model pricing, and I'm not really sure where I sit on that yet for like a tower defense game on my phone that will never get updated. Yeah, absolutely not. But when you get into the world of professional audio and professional video production, you're often talking about tens of thousands of dollars of software licenses on a single user's computer. And a lot of it isn't even being used that often. So if you were to just pay upfront for every single license in the Autotune bundle, it would pay for itself after like seven years, assuming that you use this stuff at least once a month and that you have absolutely no interest in any new offerings from the company. I actually do personally understand and feel how subscription models initially seem like an uncomfortable transition. But when you do the math, I can't really agree with the people who are like, subscription model? Nope, no way. It's dead to me. I'll never use, look at, or think about that product ever again. Anyway, I'm going to try and talk in Terry's into giving me some extended trials or something for my Patreon and Discord members or stream viewers, which brings me to, if you learned anything today or if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that little notification bell down there. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want access to a huge Discord community with everything from music making sessions to game servers, and if you want access to audio assets and unreleased music that you hear on this channel and unreleased music that you don't hear on this channel, then my Patreon is for you. And you can join our amazing community for as little as $1. Bye.